So there's the disclaimer about the brand names that they use for the vehicles, which are relatively realistic in this version. So they say it's to help players relate to the fictional universe of the game. Qualities that have been attributed to various vehicles are for game purposes only and are not intended to represent those of real commercially available machines, whether similarly named or not. So, these are the scenarios, the beginner scenarios. So, I've done Boulder Breakers and I've done Sandbox Settler. Sandbox Settler is better for a full demonstration. So, I'm going to do that one. Weatherworld I haven't tried yet. But, you can play the game a lot earlier in Transport History, in 1900, in Locomotion. So, it's a little bit more interesting in that way than Transport Tycoon, the original, or Deluxe. And you have these very, very strange looking people as your potential characters, but they've given them names in this version of Transport Tycoon, or rather Locomotion. And I can't decide really who to pick here, because as before, they all look basically ridiculous. And... Well, I mean, some of them look halfway normal, but they're basically really weird looking characters. I don't know what it is with Transport Tycoon and weird looking characters. I've played Tony Terrific before. I guess I can use him. These are the other ones anyway. And you can put in any name you want. You don't have to use their name. But because I am not feeling imaginative, I'm going to put his name. And I'll put him as Tony Not-So-Terrific. I've already played him as Tony Terrific before. I've actually played this scenario more times than any other locomotion scenario. But I just put it on pause to scout my land here. I actually didn't want to do the finance screen there. I have to find suitable initial routes. But in locomotion, it makes sense to start with trams rather than with buses. It is more profitable. 
But it's the same idea, basically. You take two towns that are close to each other that are relatively large, and then you set up a transit service. In this case, I'll also connect the roads in case I want to run buses or trucks later, because it doesn't look like it's going to be expensive in this case. And you actually have to point the roads in the correct direction, like that. In general, the road and railroad building interface is a bit different in locomotion. Now, the tram tracks can be on roads or not. In this case, I'm going to put them on the road, the old-fashioned way. And trams are actually both inexpensive to build. Both the track and the trams themselves are cheap. In sharp contrast to buses and transport tycoon. And they tend to make a decent profit, not a huge profit. But they are, I think, the best vehicles to start with in locomotion. In spite of having no role at all in the old transport tycoon games. Other than as add-ons. So finding a good route is not horribly challenging, but you want to pay some attention, especially you want to think about how the trams are going to turn around. They do give you this turnaround loop, which is not really realistic, but it is handy. So we go to the other end of the line, we'll put a loop in there too. Looks like I'm going to have to bulldoze this. And it's a little bit awkward bulldozing things in locomotion compared with Transport Tycoon. It's one of the downsides to the interface. So here, it switched me over to rough road, or really dirt road, to so switch it back to tram tracks, and try that again. Switch me to road again without my wanting it to. I will put in a curved road there, because I do want that road to be functional if I want it later. Try a third time to do this bulldozing of the excessively long tram track. Alright, now it looks like it worked. I'm not sure if the mediocre reviews of this game had much to do with the user interface, but I think the user interface, in spite of being newer, is still a little bit more awkward than in Transport Tycoon. Now, you do get tram stops and bus stops as an option. You don't have to build a full station, and you generally don't. And another thing you can do is that you can put bus stations, tram stations, and so on right next to each other, and they can share each other's cargo. So you can drop off freight with a train and pick it up with a truck in the same station. But you have to have the appropriate facilities for both. And passengers are similar, although I've found they're a little bit more awkward to manage in that way. Even though in real life it's completely routine, for example, for a bus service to feed an airport or a railroad service to feed an airport that's in the middle of nowhere and has no local business. I did try that in another game of locomotion with no luck, but in theory you should be able to do that. It's so another thing that annoyed me a little bit is that I couldn't get it to work. And my loop there is missing on my tram tracks. That should not be. I don't know how that ended up like that. So I'm going to have to relay it. Here we go. And as you'll see, when I buy the trams, they're actually very cheap. The vehicles in general in locomotion are much cheaper than in Transport Tycoon. So you're not as paralyzed at the beginning of the game. Now whether it's accurate to do it that way is another story. But everything is cheaper. I have to figure out the schedule. The schedule is going to be 
Very simple. Notice I clicked the station names and not the location of the track. That's another change from Transport Tycoon. Another change is that we don't have any depots. Can't even build depots that I'm aware of in locomotion. Wow. And transfer tycoon, you must always have them. In locomotion, as far as I know, you can never have them. This red livery turned out to be really nice, or rather red and white. It's a lot like the livery used by De Pepe, the Prague Transit Authority, years ago for trams. Although the Prague Transit Authority uses more of a red and cream, red and light cream. Depends on the tram you're talking about, of course. The 14 T's are mostly silver, of course, silver and red and black, so not all the trams use it. We have some coal mines, some of them under construction there. I look around for a power plant to connect those two. I don't see anything. There's a steel mill there. The steel mill would be able to take the coal. But steel mills are a little bit complicated to implement, just like Railroad Tycoon, because you need to bring in iron ore and coal and ship the steel out, if you really want to do it correctly. And then the steel goes to a factory, and the factory produces goods, and you have to find a market for the goods. And just like in Railroad Tycoon, only the larger towns will take goods. So here I see a road network next to another road network that I can connect. Connect these two towns. I can put another tram service in here. Or bus service, but I'm going to opt for trams. Trams are... In my experience, much better in locomotion than buses, at least in the earlier stages of the game. Although you have buses from the very beginning. So I try to get as much population on the route here as I can. So the route is largely based on that rather than on the fastest way to do it. Trams obviously are all about intermediate business. Heavy rail is a little bit like that too, but there aren't too many express trams in the world. Trams are generally for transit. Now, one thing I can do is I can put in a loop here in the town center. One thing that you might be noticing is I'm having to adjust the track construction for the grades because these grades are not automatically taken into account. So here I have to, because it won't let me continue going straight, I have to make it sharply up a grade and then level it out when I get over the grade. Originally, I didn't understand that, and I ran into trouble building tram tracks on roads in cities because it has to be perfect. It has to match the grade of the road exactly. Otherwise, you can't build it all. And you have to set it up manually. There's no other way. Another thing is that when you have a T-junction, my understanding is you have to put turns in both directions if you want it to work that way. At least for trams. The roads seem to be a little bit more flexible, although I could be wrong about that. As I've said before, I prepared for this video by playing Locomotion for 13 days straight. Almost 14 days, but not quite. But there's actually a fair amount of depth to this game. You could play it that long and still not know very much about it, to be fair. So 
So here we're looking at the value of all this territory. All this infrastructure. So I'll put in these stations. Actually, the value specifically, this is the distance. It's not really the, the dollar value of each of those road and rail sections. And it does matter because of the value you get from transporting passengers and freight. Because just like Railroad Tycoon and just like Transport Tycoon, distance matters. Although in this case, I'm going more for volume of traffic, not for revenue from a single run. Because we're dealing with trams. And it does give you a lot more consistency and flexibility if you do it this way. Which is why I'm doing it. You don't end up stranding your tram someplace where there's a slow business day. You could name the stations anything you want, really. I'm trying to not overthink it too much, but I do want the names to make some sense. So I've got to build another tram to serve this particular system. You can put two or three of them on and you don't actually need signaling, just like in real life. For the moment, I'm only going to build one. But eventually you will want multiple trams to deal with the volume of the traffic. Otherwise, your reputation declines for lack of adequate service. Here I put the beginning station at the wrong end of the schedule. I still won't be starting there. Notice instead of using the turnaround loops provided, I built my own by looping the tracks through this city center, the town center, and that actually works. I originally did all my layouts that way actually. Now of course I could connect these two towns, even these three towns, so that would be a logical next step, I suppose. So I will do so. I'll connect the roads and then I will put in tram tracks. Because the roads could always be handy later, should be noted. When I first started playing Locomotion, I didn't really want to put in the money on this, but it's Worth it if the distances are not prohibitively long. Now here's the question of how I want to approach the town. And this gives me the fullest run through the town if I do it this way. Accessing the most population. I got my rough road here again. You have to select road construction as opposed to rough road construction from the pull-down menu. You can't switch between the two once you're in the road building window there. Which again is an interface mistake, I think. I think they should have done it. 
more ergonomically. Here I'm getting speed records for my trams just because I don't have any other vehicles. These speeds are obviously not very fast. I have to figure out my curve here with the tram tracks. It has to match exactly, otherwise locomotion will not allow me to do it. So, we loop it through the town here. really not loop it. I'm just going straight through. It's important to make a distinction there. The question is, what's my best route through town? Should I loop it in the town for local traffic or not? I also have this capital issue. I'll borrow $2,000. Let's see where that gets me. Even though the interest rates are higher in locomotion than in Transport Tycoon, you don't have to borrow as much money, so interest rates are still an issue, but not as much of an issue. And you just don't need as much money. And I anticipate I'll still need to borrow more money to finish this because my revenue coming in is just not adequate. So I don't think I'll go to that final town there. I think I'll just stop here, put in a loop, and have an end-to-end -end service. Make sure I have the track turning in both directions, as I mentioned before. And if you zoom in, you can see it. I don't know how well this video is showing it to you. because It is a little bit fuzzy, even though I'm taking full advantage of the 800 by 600 resolution, because it is a 2000s game, not a 1990s game. Well, I have to figure out where best to put the stations because I almost forgot to put them in. And again, I'm putting one in basically for each neighborhood so that I have a high frequency of revenue payments coming in. Not necessarily large ones, but very frequent ones. Keep the flow of revenue steady.
So this is taking me a little while to get this done here. Again, because I want them to be named logically. I don't have a perfectionist attitude about it, but still, it gets confusing if you don't name them something logical. Especially with tram stations, when you have so many more of them than you have with heavy rail stations. So if I get straight back here, and then I guess do a loop around the town center here, turn the tram around. Now I can depart. And I predict that it will loop through the town before it leaves, and I'm right. And because the other tram is on the wrong side of the road, they're in conflict. One thing about locomotion is that when traffic conflicts, they eventually reverse and try to find an alternate path for the direction they were going in. Sometimes it's a good thing and sometimes not. In this case, it worked out. I think if I put a loop in there, it might help me a little bit with turnarounds, just in case. A little bit of redundancy. But we'll have to see. So I was making some money there. Not really profiting yet. But it is on its way out of Tasty Wood, as they're calling it. You have a choice of town names from different parts of the world, generally the Alps, which I guess would mean German names, Britain, which would mean English names. It's I guess Gaelic names and American names, however much you want to laugh about that. But they also have a choice of silly names, and I suspect that this map has that option. Because this map comes with the scenario, comes with the game. I have not pulled it apart yet to fully analyze it. Now one thing I want to look at is where I can build a heavy rail line, because now I have this sort of reliable revenue stream from the trams, and I would like to demonstrate a heavy rail line to you before calling it quits on this playthrough. I don't see quite the same opportunities on this layout as in my Transport Tycoon Deluxe playthrough. At least the first one, anyway. Sometimes it's just a matter of luck. What resources you get where. And what customers you get where. Because this map is generated according to an algorithm. It is not the same every time. Every time you load a new game on this map, it changes. Where the towns are, where the factories are, where the mines are, and so on. So I have a paper mill here and I have a forest over here. So this is actually an easy shot. You put in a heavy rail line between the lumber camp and the paper mill. Now where you're going to send the paper is another story because there aren't any really big cities yet. And this would indeed be an issue on Railroad Tycoon's economic model also. Now here I have a little bit of a grade problem. I can't figure that out visually. One thing you can do in locomotion is turn the whole map around. In addition to zooming in, you can kind of see how it's sloped there. But how you 
fix this here. It's not clear what that slope is, if there's a slope there at all. So I try to level it out, and it's unclear why I'm not getting more. I may have to turn this map around, so I will do that and demonstrate that feature. So you can turn these maps. Now we can see what's actually wrong, is that basically what I should do is lower the land here and put that, what's going to be a station track, up against the rock cut. Which is what I'm going to end up with by doing this. Looking at my finances here, and I'll borrow a little bit more money to get this done. Victory in this scenario has to do with your performance index. You look down in the lower left, you see the company cash, and you see a percentage, and the percentage is the so-called performance index which, as I understand it, comes from a number of different data points being analyzed. In this scenario, you need 10% to win. And I've won it a number of times. As you may have seen earlier, I've done it in less than six game years, and there are some people who have done it in less than one. I think that's probably gaming it somehow. So here I'm putting in the stations. Stations and locomotion for heavy rail are generally just platforms. So the longer you make the platform, the more elaborate the station becomes. So here I need a locomotive. The so-called 242 Special, which in real life was a very rare locomotive type. I don't even know if you would call it a Special necessarily. The more common term would have been Columbian. Weirdly enough, that's the only choice of locomotive they give you at this stage of the game. It was much more common outside the United States, like for example in New Zealand. So, that somehow thought I wanted to change the company name. No, I do not. I guess I'm going to have to settle for two flat cars on flatbeds here, which is not what they call them on the railroad. But We'll say a full load of lumber for each, for all. And then after the full load, you go over to Rumbleberry and just loop back. And this obviously is not the ideal way to run a freight train. You don't want to run empty. But in locomotion, they basically force you to do this. It's one of the disadvantages to the way trains are modeled, because in Railroad Tycoon, the rolling stock on your train is determined by what you're carrying. The only thing that you keep, basically, from run to run is the locomotive. And Transport Tycoon is not set up that way. And neither is locomotion. And that's both unrealistic and more difficult. Wow. Now, I am trying to figure out if there's any more money I can get out of this town. Could maybe put in a very short tram line, but that seems like a waste. I'm wondering if I could actually truck the paper into town, but that's a little bit of a gamble, I think. It's just not a big enough town to demand it, and so I wouldn't make any money. So then the question is, what else can I build? So I have the steel mill, and I have those facilities there, including an oil refinery. Of course, for the oil refinery to be any good, you need a oil field somewhere. I don't see one close to it. Of course, the longer runs are more profitable, but they're also much more expensive to build. This is the issue. Later on in the game, when I have more capital, I could do that, but not in the early stages of the game. Now, let's see how this train is doing with its lumber shipment, which of course wouldn't be lumber in real life. It would be pulpwood, of course. Again, Railroad Tycoon is more accurate in this regard. They make a distinction between logs, pulpwood, and lumber, because lumber, of course, is cut wood. It's ready to be used. You would never use that for paper, unless you're scrapping it for some reason.
So what to do? Well, the, the train is profitable at least, not by a lot, but by a little bit. So we could look at other things we could build. But I'm running out of options of things to do in the reasonable time frame I want to aim for for this video. With a long play, maybe I'll build longer freight lines because there are a number of opportunities here if you have enough money, which I don't at this stage of the game. Even this is longer than I wanted to do, but without putting in a video this long, really it wouldn't be worth it, I think. I think I have to make a compromise here, as with the previous video, between making it short and sweet and making it watchable. I could put another tram line there, I think. And in terms of other options here, it's a little bit of a harder call, but yeah, I can't actually borrow any more money. This is part of my problem because the interest payments will at this point start to bite. And 18,000 is only just barely low enough in terms of loaned money for me to make a profit with what I've built so far. It's not as harsh as Transport Tycoon, but it's harsh enough so that you really have to take it easy on the construction early in the game, which spoils it a little bit because the AI players have no such limitation. They build a lot of stuff from the very beginning and are often very wasteful. Although in this scenario, you don't actually have an opponent because it's a beginner scenario. Theoretically, this should be easier than anything I did in Transport Tycoon. I could build another tram, I suppose. Or... It's a hard call. All of these trams are profitable. That's good news. Sometimes you do want to review your routes, just like with Belt or Tycoon to make sure that you don't have anything stranded anywhere or serving an industry that no longer exists. There are things that could catch you by surprise if you're not monitoring your fleet carefully. Replacing trams and buses and everything but trains in locomotion is a pain. It's much more inconvenient than in Transport Tycoon or Railroad Tycoon. Railroad Tycoon, you just have a replace button in the train display. And in Transport Tycoon, you go to the depot and you shuffle cars around, get a new locomotive, scrap an old one. And it's not that hard. But in locomotion, the only thing which is easy to replace is a train, because you can pull a locomotive off and replace a locomotive. You can't do it with trams, so you have to redo the whole schedule and everything. Same thing with buses, same thing with airplanes, same thing with everything. You can't just replace the rolling stock used on one route unless it is a train. So, I guess my only choice here is to wait till that cash gets to be high enough so that I can pay down some of the debt. Because without paying down the debt, I'm basically not going anywhere. Because I can't borrow more money because the interest would kill me. And I can't build anything as is because I don't have enough cash. So I have to wait to pay down the debt and then see what I'm doing. And I will not reach a very impressive figure before having to end this playthrough to keep it at a reasonable end. I'm not limiting these to 10 minutes anymore, as I've said in previous videos, but I do not want this to run, for example, for an hour, because it's a lot of editing for sound and everything else. 
And you get the idea already, I think. This is not my favorite game in the Transport Tycoon series, but it's not necessarily as bad as the reviewers say either. I would say there are some things about the interface which could be better, the means of replacing old trams and buses and so on could be much better. There are various things that could be better. But it's not a terrible game at all. I think maybe the main issue with it is that it's so old that it can have a little bit of difficulty running on a modern computer. Although you don't have to really set up any kind of you know, compatibility setup or emulation setup to run it. It will run off of Steam as is. There are only a few little tweaks you need to do to get it to work. And actually it runs better than the newest version of Transport Tycoon on Android, if we really want to be fair. Don't want to be too naive about it. Even though it's a much older game than the new Transport Tycoon, it does run better in Windows than the new Transport Tycoon runs in Android. No question. I'm still looking for business here, even though I know I can't actually make any investments. Unless I turn this into a long play. I could put in some trams up there, obviously. There have been games, and I've almost connected all the towns together by tram. Kind of by interurban lines, if you will. But if you're going longer distances, you always want these trees. Now, here we have a farm. Farms are quite useful for certain things. If I connect the farm to... Well, the factory is not going to really work. Necessarily. But those mills there, those grist mills, which they portray as windmills, those might be useful. I could build a railway line out to the mills, and that would actually be profitable. So if I had more capital, I could do that. I don't. I think I'm going to end this in game year January 1902, I think. Because otherwise this video is just going to take forever. And I would like to show you the new Android version of Transport Tycoon, however flawed it may be. And I have a lot of other projects for YouTube that I'm working on. So I don't want to be bogged down in doing the Transport Tycoon series forever. Even if it, some of the games are quite good. So December 1901, one month ago basically. So here, we, that's an iron mine. That would be useful if I had a steel mill nearby, but I don't. So notice more grist mills down there. Those farms, I think, are the best. But if I put in a heavy rail line from the farms to the grist mills, that would be one of the best routes I could set up. But I just don't have the capital right now. I may be able to pay off $2,000 worth of debt to lower the interest rate somewhat. So will it happen before 1902? Let's see. Yes. There we go. So over the long run, that'll help. profitable, so the cash has gone up instead of down, and my balance is finally in profit. So that's a logical place to stop, I think. I'm going to save this, though, in case I want to make it a long play, so we will save the game. Sandbox Settler, I guess. Tony. Not so terrific. 
And this could be where we start next time if I do a long play of locomotion. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.